Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the New Orleans Kings franchise as we just check out one of our former players in Yasiel Puig. And I decided not to re sign him, but he actually signed with the Pittsburgh Pirates on a two year, $7 million deal. And he's not necessarily the starter because he's got Polanco ahead of him. He could start at another outfield position, but even the other outfield positions have other guys ahead. So let's just hop into spring training. And I think this is going to be an interesting year for us because we have a lot of young guys, especially with that trade we made. Now our middle of our infield opens wide open and the outfield will look different. Will Justin Thompson live up to his hype? Will Ramiel Tapia take over in center field? And what will Carlos Santana do in his first year with us? But you can just see right away, he's going deep. And that is going to be gone. Santana already making an impact on this lineup. I have him slotted right now at the number three, four, and five spots in the lineup. I don't know where I'm going to slot him. But then we have some younger guys in our organization as well, especially at pitcher, because we have a fifth spot in the rotation that's really up for grabs. I think Forrest Whitley will either be the four or five, but that last spot as far as which starter will actually be in the rotation is up for grabs. And it's between Jimmy Pelko and also Teddy Polititis. Now, Luke Crampton actually signed with the Detroit Tigers in the offseason. So congrats to him because he's competing for a starting job. He is one of our former backup infielders. But right away, his former, I guess, organizational teammate, Jimmy Pelko, gets him to ground out. They were never on the same team at the same time. But still, a ground out for him. Congrats to him for getting a starting role. So here is Jimmy Pelko continuing this first inning versus the Tigers, and that's going to be a hit right back to him. He's got to have that one. That was an easy ground ball. So now this inning continues, and then he gives up a hit to the left side, and the inning does go on here with two outs. And now guys, a guy in running scoring position. Here is Nico Goodrum at the plate, and he hits one up the middle. And that's what happens when you do make errors. The other teams will capitalize, especially the CPU throw home, and Justin Thompson almost has his first outfield assist here in the spring. And now here is Jake Rogers at the plate with two outs, a man on second and first, and that's going to be a fly ball in Jake Cave. Will be the starting right fielder this year. He does camp under that one. So here is the guy that's supposed to be replacing Marcus Simeon. This is Jeremy Pena, the number six prospect in baseball. He starts out the spring with the hit down the left field line. He is thinking two on this one, and he will make it in there. He's got decent speed with 78. That's pretty good. And he does start out hot, as I hope he keeps it up here throughout the spring because we will need somebody to take the place of Simeon at short. And then Scooter is only here for one more year. I don't know if he's going to be on the team long term. I guess we'll have to make that decision after the season. But right now, you know he made a ton of errors in the infield last season. So here is a fly ball deep to center. And it makes it over the wall. And that's Jorge Soler, his first home run of the spring. And Jimmy Pelko gave up another run. That's two runs given up. Now here's the next batter up in the fourth inning now. Here's a shot off the wall with the man on second base, and that is going to be another run score. So Jimmy Pelko is giving up a couple of big hits. He's at 54 pitches through three innings, but he does eventually get through four with Encarnacion at the plate. It's a ground ball up the middle. And look at Scooter flash in the glove. That's a nice throw to first base. And it's 3-1 to one here as now Jeremy Pena comes back up. Let's see what he can do here in his second at bat. Here's a ground ball to second base, and that is going to be a ground out is that brings up Justin Thompson here at the top of the lineup. I want to see what he can do as well in that leadoff spot. His leadoff spot is not solidified. He's definitely going to probably be at the MLB level in center field. But he flies out, and that one is a hitless game for him in this one. And that one does get the Tigers a win. They do eventually go on to win it. 3-1, to one, very uneventful game except for Pelco giving up a couple of uh, big hits. And then Carlos Santana going deep in his debut as well. So now we move on to another game here in spring training. We're going to go over a few games. In this game, we get to see Yanni Hernandez, a guy that we signed in free agency. And I don't know if you guys saw it in my community tab. I updated his stealing and his base running aggressiveness because in real life, his, uh, uh, what should I call it? His success rate for stealing bases is 71%. I looked at the stats in his minor league 
uh, stat book, and it looks like he is a really aggressive base dealer. He he attempts a lot of, a lot. I mean, a lot, a lot of stolen bags in real life, and he actually is pretty good at it. So I'm gonna put those stats up. I want to make it realistic. I also up up updated how he looks so i updated his likeness so you will see him and hopefully he stays on the mlb roster because he hit 267 with the rangers last season let's see what he can do this year so here is michael brantley at the plate he gets one over the middle of the plate this is the first time you're seeing him in the spring and he hits hits a deep fly ball that one just pretty much dies in the air and it is out is that brings up santana who already homered already in this episode and then he cranks one deep that one is going to be a missile over the right field wall. That's gone. His second homer of the spring. If Santana can keep this up, he might lead our team in home runs. I think it's going to be between him and Cave because Cave is going to be right in the middle of the lineup as well. And we end up being down 5-2 to two here in the fifth inning as Thompson finally gets a pitch to groove. And that one is a deep shot to left center. That one does knock off the wall. It's going to be a stand-up double for him. And now it's 5-2 to two with a man on second base here with one out. Here is David Bodie at the plate. He will probably stay in that two-hole like he would hit last year because he really hit well in that role. But here is a shot to the right field wall, and that one will score Thompson from second. And Bodie does slide in safe, and that's an RBI double for David Bodie. He led our team in average. I have no idea how he did not win the Silver Slugger. He had a higher average than Urshela that I think won it for the Yankees. And now here he is in spring, starting out hot once again. So here's Asus Aguilar, who might hit in the five hole this year. We'll have to see. I hit him in the four hole last year. He swings and misses and leaves guys on base. So let's check out Jeremy Payne now, back at the plate. And he crushes one down the left field line. That one is foul, though. And now with a one-two count, swing and miss. And that one will be a strikeout for him. As he did start out hot in that first game with a double, but kind of cooled off a little bit. And then the Marlins end up winning this one 9-3. to three. Wins and losses don't matter in spring. You just want to see certain players do well. You're not really trying to win every game. Obviously, you're trying to win, but you obviously want to see guys just do well individually. So here is Michael Brantley here versus the Atlanta Braves now. Let's see what he can do at the plate. He hits one hard to the left center gap. That one makes it all the way off the wall. And that's the thing. I don't know if Carlos Santana is going to hit three. Brantley might hit three. I think they both might switch off at three. I think David Bodie is stuck at that two spot. I think that's where he hits best. So let's see what he does there. So here is Jeremy Pena up. And you see that average? It dipped down to 129. I mean, he just went straight cold. And I am not... I, I'm, I don't like that at all because, I mean, he is our future at shortstop. And right now here's Corey Lee at the plate, our future at catcher in his second full season at the MLB level. He hits one to the right center field, and that's going to be a RBI, a triple, stand-up triple at that. And now we go to the uh, bench here to check out maybe another young prospect of ours, Tommy Knight, who silently made two straight all-star games at the double-A level. He's going to be at triple-A this year. I am looking forward to seeing what he can do. He will take over for Jesus Aguilar when his contract is up. So here he is with the man on third base. I want to see what he can do. He does drive one up the middle in an RBI in a pinch hit situation. That is what you want to see out of your young guys. It's two to one here. As now we move on to the third inning. Now it's two to three. Let's see what Pena can do. I mean, he can't be that cold. Let's just see what he does with the man in scoring position. So here with a 2-2 count. Ground ball up the middle. Let's see if it sneaks through, and it doesn't. But Albies, some, for some reason, goes to third base on that one. That one should have been an uh, inning ender. Instead, it's bases loaded. Now they give David Bodie a chance and run over a scoring position. And you know he doesn't fail much here, and he doesn't. Right field, and that one gets all the way to the wall, and that one will clear the bases. I don't know what Albies did on that play. Why did he go to third base on that? That was an easy put out at second. Maybe even at first, it was easier at second, though, as a chopper. And now 5-3 to three as Jake Cave comes up. And he smokes one up the middle. Jake Cave, I didn't show much of him in the spring, but he absolutely tore the cover off the ball. We'll look at the stats after spring here. As now that brings up Carlos Santana in the, in the, next, bat, in the next hole, and he drives one deep to center field. And, wow, that one was nearly gone as well. And, wow, that's caught by Acuna on the wall. And now... Jesus Aguilar in the seventh inning up. He hits one, two second base. 
and it's going to be another error by Albies. I don't know what he's doing in this game. His head is just not in this one. And we do get a runner at third now with Michael Brantley coming up. Let's see what he does with runners in scoring position. He hits one, two center field, and that one is going to be an easy pop-up. And we will tag the runner from third base. But look at that throw by Acuna. He is out at home. And wow, that one was an interesting game. I don't know what Albies was doing, but we end up getting the win 8-3 to three in this one, 11 hits. And that's the type of offense you want to see from this team. I think we're going to have a big offensive year. I think our pitching, we don't really know how good it will be, but our offense will definitely be there. So one guy I do want to give a look here in spring training is Tim Beckham. He was in the minors all year last year. He was with us in season one. But I want to give him that shot again because I remember how good he was in season one. He was definitely one of our better players, but he just wasn't high in overall. So I kind of moved him down last season. I want to see what he can do in more of a utility role this year because remember, he can play every single position. So now let's check out the other guy who's battling for that fifth spot in the rotation. It's Teddy Palatitis. I want to see what he can do with some action here with a lot of innings. Now I'm going to give him probably like five innings in this game. We'll see if he can go longer, but I want to see what he can do, at least getting a normal starts reps of innings. So here is our man at the plate. That is going to be a battle here in the middle infield. I don't know who's going to win it, but he does draw the walk there as that brings up David Bodie who hits one on a hit and run, and we will send the runner, and look at this. We are a little too aggressive trying to get back to second, and that is going to be safe there. And now Tommy Knight at the plate. Let's see what he can do. He pinch hit earlier in this episode and got an RBI single, but this time he is going to fly out to left or to third base, and that is going to be three outs. And let's check back out on Teddy Polititis on the mound facing Paul DeYoung, who hits one deep to center field. That one reaches a warning track off of the wall. Justin Thompson plays it and gets it to the cutoff, man. And that is going to be a leadoff double here for the Redbirds as now that brings up Tyler O'Neill to the plate. Who hits one down the right field line? That one gets all the way to the wall. That's a hard ground ball. And Cave comes up throwing. And that is going to be a double, a RBI double. And the St. Louis Cardinals take over 1-0 here in this game. So one guy I want to look at here in the middle of the field is Nate Barron. He is an interesting prospect. He's 26 years old. He does hit from both sides of the plate. Great vision, great contact, and pretty good power. I mean, that's pretty good for a young guy who I wouldn't say he's like terribly young, but he's 26. So let's see what he can do. He's 70 overall, and he does start his spring out with the hit up the middle. I guess he's already had some at-bats in the spring, but he's been doing pretty well so far. Now here is Scooter. Let's just see one at-bat from him. Here is a low slider, and they are going to call that one a ball. He's hitting over 300 in the spring as well. So that brings up Lorenzo Quintana, who was the backup catcher in season two when we began, and that's a shot down the left field line, stopped by the third baseman, and it's not going to be in time. So there is a battle for the backup catcher spot as well. We did trade for Reese McGuire last year, but I want to give Lorenzo Quintana a chance. So here is Justin Thompson up. Base is loaded, and he does hit one perfectly, but it's right at the left fielder, and it's still a 1-0 game here in St. Louis's favor. That brings up Yanni Hernandez. Another hit up the middle for him, and that one will get him on first base. And he's a guy maybe we have to consider at that leadoff spot as well. He can steal now, and he's got 90 speed. That brings up David Bodie, who hits one to left field. And maybe that's a preview of what's going to come this season. Bodie right behind Yanni Hernandez. And now we got guys on first and second here with Jake Cave at the plate. A scenario you want. And a slider on the inside part of the plate. That one gets past the catcher. So now guys on second and third. This at bat continues. And Jake Cave turns on that one and just absolutely crushes it. That's why I said Jake Cave or Carlos Santana are probably going to lead this team in home runs as a chopper to second base. And that one will score Yanni from third, but take a look. Bodie gets caught in a rundown. Cave gets back to first, but at least we score a run on that one, and we do tie this game up at one apiece. So let's go back to the mound. Check on Teddy Polititis, and you can just see he's starting to get in the groove. Now, one thing about these young pitchers, I need to learn what they do best, and I found out midway through this game, his best three pitches are changeup, cutter and fastball he's not going to throw a lot of breaking pitches he's going to throw that change a lot and then that cut fastball will be valuable 
And I highlighted before this game, I want to check out Tim Beckham. So here he is at the plate here, hitting 333 in the spring, and he hits one hard up the middle. And he's a guy I might have to consider at the MLB level. I think last year I had an issue with cuts, or at least with moving guys down, because if they had three or three options, I couldn't move them down. But I'm going to try to do it, and I'm going to try to show you guys the issue I was running into. Hopefully I don't run into it again, because it was making me put guys on waivers when I attempted to move them down. So hopefully I don't have that issue this year. So now with Yanni Hernandez up at the plate, guys on first and second. Here's a slow road to Paul DeYoung. He comes up throwing, and he's called out at first base. I don't know about that one. It looked like he may have beaten that throw. But nonetheless, it's still a 1-1 game going into the fifth inning. So here is Cave back at the plate, and he walks. So now here comes Nate Barron at the plate. I highlighted him before the episode, before this game. 323 in the spring. He is hitting phenomenal. One for two in this game. And he hangs on one. And that one is crushed. Gone. A no doubt home run for Nate Barron. 412 feet. Actually his third home run of the spring. I mean, he has some sneaky power. He hits from both sides of the plate. He's not the greatest in the field, but he is decent. He's kind of like Marcus Simeon was last year. Maybe he's a guy we consider at shortstop because he is hitting over 300 in quite a few at-bats, too. I mean, he's getting a lot of reps. I guess we'll have to consider that because we'll see what Jeremy Pena can do. There is obviously a battle in the middle infield, and right now, I just don't know. I mean, Pena is not hitting the greatest, and Barron is. So here is Justin Thompson at the plate with a man on second base. And he hits one to right field. And that one will be an RBI single for the rookie. He will be officially be a rookie this season. He didn't have enough at-bats to be considered a rookie last year. So he could definitely make that run at rookie of the year. So that brings up Yanni Hernandez, who hits one to the right side. And that one will be a grounder. And he beats it out. And Thompson tries to get to third base. And they call him out. That is maybe a bad call. I'm not sure. It looked like he was in. So let's go back to the mound. Teddy Palatitis is still on the mound. 81 pitches and only giving up one run as that brings up Paul Goldschmidt. And he gets a hit to second to center field. And look at this. Justin Thompson kind of casually just throws it in. And the throw is offline. And Yanni Hernandez can't apply the tag. So now a man on second base here. Two outs in the inning. And Paul DeYoung goes opposite field. He has two hits off of Teddy Politis. And now guys on the corners here. Dylan Carlson at the plate. And Politis does get him to ground out. And that one will get us out of this inning. And wow, Politis is impressive. He's got through six innings, only one run given up. So that brings up Nate Barron once again in the six. And another hit, three for four in this game. He's given us something to think about. We'll go over the stats next, but I want to give Jeremy Pena every opportunity, like I said in the offseason, to still have this starting job, but hitting 163. He's got to hit better. Here's a shot to left field, and that one will help. He does get a single in this one in a pinch hit. And now base is loaded here in the sixth inning, and that brings up Thompson. Two for four in this game as the top of the lineup comes back up. And it's a hard ground ball to third base. The third baseman does bobble it a little bit, but does corral it. And he does get the out at first base. And we go up 8-1, to one, but actually the St. Louis Cardinals come all the way back and end up winning in this one. Like I said, wins and losses obviously don't matter in the spring. And we end up losing, but I saw some very encouraging things. Nate Barron, 3-5. for five. Yanni Hernandez was 2-3 for three as well. And then Justin Thompson had a multi-hit game as well. So let's just review the spring. Now we're at the end of spring training, and now let's look at the stats. I think Tim Beckham has a spot. I think he hit well more than enough. I mean, he did way more than enough. Carlos Santana, man, he's going to be hot going into the season. 349 in the spring. That is really, really good. He's going to be probably our three hitter. Scooter Jeanette came in hot again, over 300. But Nate Barron, we have to consider him now. 333. Look at the fielding stats, Not his fielding attributes, not the best. 64 fielding, only 63 arm strength. But his hitting is so good that I don't know if I can keep him out of the starting lineup uh, over uh, Jeremy Pena, who really had a disappointing spring. Hoyon Park was a guy that I hoped to develop into maybe a guy that maybe Nate Barron was looking like. But Hoyon Park has not done well in the minors since I've acquired him in season one from the Yankees. And he is disappointed. I'm going to keep him in the minors and see what he does. 
for right now, he's going to be there until he really pops. But Yanni Hernandez in the spring did so well that his morale went up to 80. So his overall went up to 80 based on his morale. He was at 76 by default. But now look at him. I mean, he is at 80 morale, hit close to 300. He might start at second or even short. He can play a little shortstop. That is his secondary position. So he might actually be the short starter at shortstop. I have not made up my mind yet, but I like what I saw from Nate Barron. I also like what I saw from Yanni Hernandez. Ramiel Tapia hit good enough to platoon. I think I'm going to platoon him and Justin Thompson. I'll have to figure out how I will do that. Probably, obviously, versus lefties, Justin Thompson will start. And versus righties, Ramiel Tapia will start. I do have Tapia sign at least for one more season. So that's really a decider there. I can maybe ease Justin Thompson into the lineup and let him start in a platoon role. I don't think the expectations are that high for him yet. So I guess we'll have to see. Now, Tommy Knight had an excellent spring to me. He hit four home runs, hit 250. That's ex that's kind of what you expect from a power hitting guy, especially from the left side of the plate. He's going to hit a lot of dingers, but he's going to hit not for the highest average. Now, Corey Lee didn't have the greatest of springs, but I will be looking for him to improve that average at least. I mean, 246 was okay for his rookie year. I think he finished second in rookie of the year voting, so that was pretty good for him. But man... Jeremy Pena just disappointed. I think I'm going, I've thought about it. I think I'm going to actually try to trade for another young prospect in the middle infield because I need to be sure. Jeremy Pena, he's just not ready. I mean, if you hit 100 in the spring and you really haven't hit over 250 in the minors yet, that's a red flag. And I cannot play him. He's really good on defense, but. I just don't see him being an everyday shortstop right now. He's got the potential, but I might have to just keep him down in the minors until he shows that he can show up. And this was even at the double-A level. He couldn't hit well at double-A, not even triple-A. Reese McGuire has a terrible, terrible spring, 146. And now I have a decision to make there. Who's going to be the backup catcher? Because Lorenzo Quintana actually did decent in the spring. Michael Brantley went cold in the spring, but I am not worried about him. I mean, think about it. He pretty much hit 300 the last three seasons. But I have something to think about here in the middle infield for sure. Now let's look at our pitchers. Pablo Lopez is going to be the ace. Man, was he good in the spring. He was untouchable. He is going to be poised for maybe a Cy Young campaign. I think he's that good. Forrest Whitley did pretty well i mean he is solidified in that four spot in the rotation for sure maybe even the three spot who knows i guess we'll have to see i want to see improvement from alex wood because he had a bad postseason he'll need to improve there but nate jones had an amazing spring and he's got trade value that's one of the trade chips i will have for maybe a young prospect up the middle i will probably trade for a top flight one like probably of Jeremy Pena's caliber at a potential guy in his mid 70s. I think that's what I'm looking for. And maybe even Jeremy Pena might get shipped. Who knows? I mean, if he does start out slow, either at the majors or in the minors, I might have to consider that. Now, Teddy Politis, I think in that one outing won a job for me. I want to see what Jimmy Pelko has in the minors just at least a couple of weeks or at least a couple of months before I consider moving him up because I think that. I, right now, I just think that Palatitis is a better pitcher overall. I think Pelko still got some work. He's still 19, so there's really no rush for him. He had a 1-5-2 whip in the spring. 22 strikeouts, 10 walks is a pretty good ratio, but he did have a high whip, so we'll need to get that down. Brad Hand actually had a shaky spring as well, but I'm really not worried about it because he's a good pitcher. But I am worried about him being the closer. So if he can't close well, I'm pretty sure I'm going to move Ryan Stanek there. And maybe even a guy like Luke O'Connor. I mean, if you just look at Luke O'Connor, 0.94 whip in the spring. Now, this guy's only 69 overall. He is a, one of your guys' submitted prospects. And look at him. I mean, he was amazing last year. I mean, he had a whip below one, a 0.88 whip in 22 innings pitched. I mean, that's pretty good. And... I got to say, he has 
definite value on this team and I might extend him. I, one thing I want to do this year is extend a player during the season because I kind of did some research and I saw that every team at least extends one player before or during the season and I want to keep it realistic in that way. So I really do have some question marks here. Who's the backup catcher? Who's going to be the starting shortstop and maybe even second base? I mean, Scooter's going to start because he is hitting the ball extremely well, but I even might DH him sometimes. So who's going to play in the infield there? I mean, Yanni Hernandez was impressive in the spring. He hit 297. So he even might start at shortstop. I'm not really sure. It's definitely up in the air. Third base is solidified. David Bodie outfield is pretty much solidified. I think that's just going to be cave and right. Uh, obviously, Brantley and left and then Thompson and Tapia will platoon. And then Tim Beckham will be the utility guy. He will play everywhere. Billy Hamilton, who knows if he will be at the MLB level. He hit 131, but I think that speed, I'm going to have to just use that on the bench. So I'll probably have him at the MLB level, but I do have some decisions to make. So next episode will be opening day and probably a couple more games after that as well. So you don't want to miss that. So hit subscribe, hit that like button, stay tuned. Let me know who you guys think should be that starter at shortstop. I honestly don't know. So let me know what you guys think. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. Yeah, they filling out these job applications. Life got hard after high school graduation. I went to college and your boy got financial aid. They gave me money, then I went and bought a pair of J's. And I bought a pair of shades. And I bought a new computer. Half a hundred dollars left. Spent the rest on.